Every, if you want to dismantle a system of oppression, you need to understand its various components. You need to understand what that structure looks like in order to be able to take it apart. A huge foundation of um, maintaining oppressive structures is, um, is the bedrock of colonial fiction. So uh, it justifies why we need colonialism. They, they, the colonial fictions surrounding Aotearoa are generally that uh, colonialism was historical, not contemporary and not ongoing, uh, that our colonial experience was a beneficial one, that it was invited, uh, that we have benefited from it, and, um, and that, in fact that we needed it. And so those colonial fictions have been utilised to wage war on our people and execute a long drawn out experience of genocide. And I don't use that word lightly. You need to understand the mortality rates for Māori in this country, uh, particularly in Tairawhiti where we live, at, which is the epicentre of these celebrations. You're going to die earlier uh, from a preventable death more often, six times, more often than if you are a Māori even anywhere else in this country, 10 times more than if you're non-Māori in many cases. And so, um, and so we need to understand that this is an experience of genocide that's being visited upon our people over a, over a long period of time. And if we want to turn the tide on that, as I say, we need to understand the structure that upholds it and underpins it. And so these colonial fictions are a big part of that culture and the colonial fictions are being driven through the Cook events, the Cook anniversary events. Um, there are some opportunities for different people to tell different stories. There's one relevant story to tell here and it's the story of genocide and imperial expansion. We can tell other stories any other time, and we should tell our stories all the time. But the most relevant story to tell this year is that of imperial expansion and genocide. So what did that look like? The first day that Cook arrived on these shores, he shot at our people and killed. The second day he was here, he shot again and killed Te Rāko. The first day he killed Te Maru. The second day he was here, he killed Te Rāko. There was another skirmish not long after that, he killed a number more. The numbers range on that second one. Not long after that, on his way out of the harbour, he came across a fishing vessel. They were unarmed. They were coming back from a fishing expedition. He ordered muskets to be fired above their heads. They tried to escape, as you would. He ordered the muskets to be fired into the waka, killing all but three who dove overboard. They then chased those three young men down and pulled them aboard against their will and held them for three days. This is not an exceptional experience. He barely went a week without shooting at us or killing more people over the time that he was here on that first journey. He also tied our ancestors to masts and whipped them with the cat of nine tails. He also abducted pregnant wahine and held them below decks. He cut the skin from the arms of tipuna while tying them to the masts in a way that appalled and scarred his own crew, even by the standards of the day he was particularly violent and that was noted in the journals of the crew. He shot at our people in Te Matua, Maui, down by Napier, Ahuriri. He shot at our people in the Bay of Plenty by Fakari, by Ahuahu, 
he shot and killed our people in Mercury Bay. In Te Taitukero, he shot and killed our people. In Tōtara Nui, he shot and killed people, he and his crew. And so, if you look at that across the Pacific, it also was not exceptional. He shot and killed Tipuna in Tahiti, he shot and killed Tipuna in Tonga, in Hawaii. It was not an aberration what happened in Te Ranganui Akiwa. It was his modus operandi, it was his MO. Everywhere he went, he shot at natives. And in fact, if you read his journals, he himself talks about the need to demonstrate your supremacy, your superiority, and that that necessitates the taking of their lives and that necessitates violence, the demonstration of violence and the superiority of your firepower over them to keep them in check. And so when we talk about him as a excellent navigator or a renaissance man, a cartographer, it is a deeply offensive statement. You can choose to reflect on people's qualities. You can choose to talk about what a great gardener Hitler was. Nobody does that because they understand it's incredibly offensive in light of the atrocities that were committed. So that's why it's so important to tell the story of what it was he truly did when he invaded our oceanic territory of Tumana Nui Akiwa and killed and abducted and tortured and hurt our Pacific tipuna and invaded the mutu of Te Ika Maui and Te Waka Maui and Aotearoa and did the same to our tipuna. That's why it's important for us to expose those colonial fictions if we hope to be able to bring about Indigenous justice.